Wait, seriously. I'm trying to write this week's episode. You're scurrying back and forth. Obviously, I'm watering the plants, Vince. You know those are fake, right? Yeah, well, I saw Portland doing it the other day to their field. Worked for them. <sighs> okay, bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of One Head Football. I am Connor Colopsis. This is Vince LaRosa. It looks like we are in search of the playoff line once again, sadly. But first, Vince, how's Portland? Ooh. Well, it rained. I had to jump between train cars to get to my Uber after dinner. I had an excellent old-fashioned from a place that had a menu that was 70 pages of whiskeys. And I got Jessica a donut from Voodoo Donuts. That sounds great, but I was actually talking about the match. Yeah, but you can watch the highlights for that. I mean, I'm giving the people what they want, right? Do they, though? Anyway, let's take a look at what really happened between LAFC and Portland. Highlights. Not so fun highlights. 15 minutes after they watered the fake pitch, which if you weren't there, it was another 15 minutes after it rained. It's like a slip and slide. I don't know why they kept putting water on plastic. Anyway, Chicho Arango, great ball. Carlos Vela esque Decent first touch. Could have taken another one. Gotta finish that. Could have taken another touch. Could have taken another touch. Why are you trying to like bury that in the back of the net? You got to keep your nerve. Here's a, here's a bigger problem though. You missed that, and then Portland's playing Flores Lava, Ping Pong, Romero, Thomas Romero. No man's been, land. He must have been in on the game because he looked terrified. Yeah, he looked like he actually wanted to play. Yeah, that's not good goalkeeping. We we need better from him. Sifu, not the best free kick, but don't jump in the wall with your arms up. Don't turn. Don't. Be Sebastian Blanco on a wall. Don't ever be Sebastian Blanco on a wall. And then Chicho scores. Is there any ever doubt? Ever any doubt? No, the dude's automatic now. He's scoring five straight games. Yeah, that's great. Might even be newcomer of the year in MLS. Oh. Quick counter. Good ball by, from Edwards. Oh, that's an incredible ball from Edwards. And then and this, this is, is an perfect. even better this ball. This is LAFC. This is a oh, perfect Pardon? ball. Soft, nice pace. Dude looks like he's all ghost. The net. That's what's, that's gonna be playing on soccer meme page. He missed everything, because I'll let you know the stadium is open back there. Uh, but again, this is the bigger problem. Each time LAFC missed a big chance, they scored, had a chance to go 1 0 up, then had a chance to go 2 1 up, and this is how it ends. I feel like Chicho. That's my face. So, below the playoff line. How do three playoff teams have negative goal differentials? That says a lot about this season. Yeah, and we're not there, but let's go to the next. We're, we're on the cusp. We're just getting there. Not bad. Texas. <laughs> Back to six pointers from here on out. Man. Six pointers. Every game matters. Can you do the Texas thing again? <laughs> so, everyone, before we go any farther in the show, just a reminder you could help out a member of the Black and Gold community. Last week, we ran a feature on Holy Ground's Coffee Shop. The family owned business needs renovations to bring music, art shows, and events back to its patio. It's a great gathering place for the local community as well as Black and Gold fans. And the owner is an LAFC season ticket member. That's right, everyone. Anything you can contribute helps. Go to 110football.com slash community for details and the link to the GoFundMe campaign. Let's make a difference in our city. Yes, all right, back to the show. Uncle Jay, what is up? Oh, we got a lot coming up. First of all, I want to say welcome back, little homie. I'm hoping your presence will add to the good vibes. Then we need to catch that playoff line. Stupid playoff line. Watch your back. We're going to catch you, fool. Speaking of fool, Vince <laughs> and Connor and Jerry are in the fan cave to give their way to early playoff predictions. LAFC players give up the scoop on who could crush it in a singing competition show, and Eli tells us why this MLS Titan has lost its shine. But first, Connor and Vince are back at the touchscreen to break down a surprise bright spot from the game in PDX. That is right, Jay. Despite LAFC's loss against Portland, there were some very promising performances for LAFC. And Vince, you're one to always be on the lookout. 
for, for ways to help other people understand the game beyond just goals and missed chances. I think after the Timbers match, we could definitely use some of that. So take it away. Goals and missed chances were the big picture. Yep. Uh, but I went online afterwards, and some people were asking, what does Daniel Christosimo do? Well, I'll show you. Let's look at a little more detail on Daniel Christosimo. This Let's is start what with he this does. pass map. Yeah, this, this is kind is of the uh, 2D version of his day. Well, uh, okay, for Daniel Christosimo, this is an insane pass map. For oh, anyone, really? this is an insane pass map. The, 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 the what is that? Beige color? Gold. Yellow? Gold. That gold color is his, oh my goodness. That's completed passes. <laughs> Those are his completed passes in the red, incompleted passes. I mean, it's phenomenal. He stitched the team from the defense to the midfield wide. He went right to left, up and down all game, and, and he really almost had a, he almost had a perfect pass percentage. Almost, and look, and they're not just small passes, right? He's moving from side to side, he's going forward. He's making and, very difficult passes this And he's game. in a midfield too, so that's his job to really stitch the team together. But let's look at it in play form. Let's do the eye test here. Uh, one of the best things is, and let's stop it right here, is Daniel has basically bred himself into LAFC's DNA sure. really quickly. He's looking for space. He's taking plays on the half turn, so he's taking less touches, playing quickly, playing forward. He's taking that ball on his back foot, which allows him to play quicker. But I love this also because he's always looking forward to teammates and then always looking for what is the next pass, where's the next place I can link up. So as we're supporting the team. Supporting the team. As we run this, plays to his partner, gives his partner another outlet, and then immediately again, he's gonna play forward. It's like an energy line. Yeah, stitching go, the team go, together. Go, 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 keep going. He just does things right, the right way. Uh, but there's other ways. LAFC which, way. The LAFC way. Oh, Bob would hate if I said that. Uh, but let's take a look at this. Let's stop it right here. This is another way. This is defensively. This is the okay. counter press. It's a big weapon for us, right? And he sees that as this guy's coming forward, Sifu's going to easily get to that guy. Yep. So where's the next pass? It's got to be to this guy. It's a big ground to cover and a lot of space behind. He's not afraid, though, because he's all in on the LAFC way, right? So we play it. Counter press. Counter press. He's Pays there. Off. He's there to get that bad touch. If he's not there to get that bad touch, maybe that guy's able to clean it back up. And sure, keep, but at least he's there. Keep going. I love this too. Late in the game, talk about a USL guy that's not afraid. He's gonna look one way and then make the harder pass because that's at the heart of the defense. I, I mean, that harder pass that that benefits the team as a whole. I mean, if you're your Chicho Arango, for example, you're more willing to make that that run because you know a young guy like Danny can make those balls and is willing to make those balls. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there's some things he can clean up, and here we are right here. This is the moment where he knows he wants to counter press, but when you've got the touch line as an extra defender, the only way he can go is over you if you go down. So he's learning on the fly. He's still learning some things, but at least he's doing it under the guise of knowing this is the LAFC way. And let's just say that for a player of Danny Crusosmo's uh, capability, pedigree, for example, he, he, uh, he had a great game. I think the, the slander was unreasonable. Yeah, again, this is what we're trying to show you, the little smaller details. Not everyone scores all the goals, not everyone assists all the goals. There's got to be guys that stitch the team together. No, looks like LAFC scouting system has actually paid off finding some really good guys from the USL and I think that if the USL and MLS could have some some more good good vibes, good it's, vibes, good it's connection. Good for soccer in the US. It's good for soccer in the US. So thank you so much for that breakdown, Vince. Turning our focus to your podcast partner, who usually jets off to some remote destination immediately after finishing the podcast, but at least he always takes time to preview LAFC's upcoming match for us in Maxon and Relaxon. Hello, everyone out there who, like me, likes to max and relax. No relaxing this week as we get the San Jose Earthquakes. This was a one-sided rivalry. Remember, we went up there and had the zombie invasion? It was all one-way traffic. However, the Earthquakes have won the last three games, and now it is a proper rivalry. And LAFC needs to change that this weekend to make sure that they stay on track for those playoffs. Three big games here before that international break for the black and gold. Now, there's a lot of storylines about this game, but the one I enjoy the most when these two teams meet, the managers. Bob Bradley, man who's done it all for American soccer, and Matias Almeida, thorn in the side of many, including team security Paul, who won't be there. But I'll be watching, and LFC looking to get a very important result. What are you, what are you doing here? Well, yeah, what is that? Well, why don't you do the segment in the studio? Oh, oh, I like to do it as my thing to have all the foliage, happy little trees all around me. That's, that's what this segment's all about, right? Right. Um, why don't you join us? We're doing a playoff preview in the studio. Well, that sounds great. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Why don't you say so? 110 Football, in partnership with Adidas.
Espinoza. Going near post. Oh, there it is. Christian Espinoza cutting it back. Espinoza dropping for Chelsea's. Post Vela, swirling ball in. It's actually an own goal from Yule. Hey guys, thanks. This is much better. Air conditioned and the little trees to boot. Just for you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. They're here all the time. All right, let's get into it. Nine to ten matches remain in the season for almost every MLS team. So what better time than now to look at the playoffs? With me, Connor, Jerry, and Vince. We're going to decide who's in and who's out of the 2021 MLS Cup playoffs from the Western Conference. Gentlemen, this is a simple exercise. You have two emojis in front of you. If you think the team is going to make the playoffs, then you flash the broccoli emoji. If you think the team is going to fall short of the playoff line, then naturally you flash the castle emoji. Capito? Broccoli. Castle. Okay, guys. Really? Guys, I, I did my best. Okay, the emoji store was out of all the best emojis, so we're working with what we got. Broccoli castle. Forward, no? Broccoli castle. It is, what, <laughs> it is what it is. All right, let's do it. Oh, man, I'm a long way from Sports Center. All right, Houston Dynamo. Been hot, very, very hot as of late. Have they? Yeah, they got a couple wins under their belt. Like a draw for them is hot. That's yeah. hot. Wait, Hotter. Castle's out, right? A oh, point's a point. Yes, Castle's out. Castle's out. Unanimous. Sorry, Tab. Yeah. Next. Tab, tab might be out too. We got Seattle Sounders. I mean, this one's this is pretty straightforward, right? You need to right? wait on this one. Yeah. Broccoli. Next. All the way. Next team. Austin <laughs> FC. Broccoli. The broccoli team themselves. <laughs> no, the broccoli, but they go but out. They get oh, my goodness. Yeah, come on, guys. Forgot. We've been in agreement with everything so far. That would be incredible. These are going to get better. Like, these, gonna, these are going to be a little. We got Portland oh. Timbers. Ooh, they're one of the ones who are kind of, you know, living on the edge. I like their schedule. Well, like their, like schedule. their schedule. schedule. Why? Because they play Miami? <laughs> yeah. what, why do they have to play us again? I know, but that's pretty much they finished off. They beat us last they time. They finished off with RSL. Broccoli. Broccoli. I'm grilling Jerry, awesome. but I really think they're going to. Yeah. That's okay. Hard. Jeez, we, you guys did something different? Yeah, they're... We're all in agreement. They've been good. They're Colorado, one of the teams that have yeah. raced. Robert Frazier. So is this segment, like, pointless? <laughs> so, far, so, so far, yes. Some would say that's the show. Next one, FC Dallas. Uh, this is a good one, right? Just just parted ways uh, with Luchi Gonzalez. Pepe. I really like Ricardo Pepe. But... I do like too, but... So we are in... Oh, oh hey. Second. All right. So we are all out on the state of Texas. All three teams out. Three well, I've been out on the state of Texas for a long time. All right, to the next one. Sporting oh, yeah. Kansas City. I mean... Eat your veggies, kids. <laughs> they have to make it. Yeah. That a Jerry, great did you season. think of cool taglines for all of you? Uh, I will. <laughs> let's, let's, let's coming on the fly. Let's for gas. Emoji, hashtags, we've got it all. Vancouver Whitecaps. Ooh. Too cold. Stay home. Get one. Oh, Canada. <laughs> We're doing really? Mark. What? There we go. We're doing Mark DeSantos oh. dirty. Their, their form has been very, very good. Even this last stretch of the season. They're 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 they actually have played well. well. Yeah, but Kyle Alexandri is out for the year now. They're no Mark DeSantos. They're going to sneak yeah. in. They're okay. going to sneak in. All right, let's move on. They're big Ryan Goldfin. No. Hurry, big Canada. Goldfin. LA Galaxy. Right? Right? Definitely has to. Oh. Not been playing well. So the Injury concerns. I'm going broccoli, but they were on the cusp for me very much yeah. because, to your point, they give up so many shots on target. They give up so many goals. They're now switching goalkeepers back and forth, but they're going to sneak in just barely because Chicharito will probably score a, goal. A, a couple, a couple losses in a row though, and yeah. they could be in. They could, they could, they could be in major trouble. Yeah, they're yeah. winless in six. Winless in six. I mean, but that kind of sounds like us. Uh, but don't, don't yeah, but at the wrong time. Exactly, the wrong time right now. I don't feel like they have a sense of identity. Like, who are they right now? What's their motive? That's a bigger problem right you know there. What I mean? Victor Vasquez is the galaxy. That's not. Yeah. A, Never heard that before. Who is Victor Vasquez? <laughs> I heard that. October 3rd, mark your calendars, LAFC really? Galaxy. This one I think will get split, right? Ooh. San Jose Earthquakes. Earthquake. Or maybe not. Are we ready? I want them in. But. Hey, did you know there was an earthquake in Carson? Uh, yeah. yeah, I live in yeah. Long Beach. You're paying a Belgium. visit. Did you feel yeah. it? Yeah. It's pretty rough. Yeah. yeah. Not in LA. Not, not in Los Angeles. Not in LA. I know. They, they made it very clear to point out Carson. Carson's <laughs> real estate going through the roof, by the way, if you're looking yeah. for good investment, so I'm told. Next one. <laughs> maybe not after that earthquake. All right. Real Sol Okay, this one's a tough one. Demir. Yeah. Because they're firmly in the playoffs. For, Soft yeah. firm. I don't know, man. No. Oh! oh yeah. uh, it, when I, I kept, can... when I kept the Galaxy in, this was the team. Yeah, I exactly. Dude. We can't have, we can't have everybody. <laughs> See, I know what all. I know what we're gonna do. Our top seven teams to make the playoffs. I know exactly what your top seven is right now. After that vote, Minnesota United, game in hand, makes them very dangerous, very uh, uh, aggro manager. 
I like Being against the world. Well, you snooze, you loon. I like Adrian the schedule as well. There we go. Adrian. We got it. We got it to part. Yay. There we go. Really, really Not hates the MLSsoccer.com. Adrian Heath does. Uh, <laughs> I had them on the cusp, but I think they're going to. I think they are. They've just. Their form just form's gonna What's going on? Uh, you're gonna shaking dip. your broccoli. I don't know. Just, they won't get a home. Shaking me out a little Shaky bit. hands. Wait, but you got them out. I got them out. I, I see their form dipping. I, I think their defense has kind of been lackluster. They're dicey. What about the goalkeeper? Who? Uh -huh. Who's your favorite ex LAFC goalkeeper? Uh, Uva Lopez. Lopez is the right Uva Lopez answer. Is okay. Roberts. <laughs> oh, oh. LAFC. Come on. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> oh, we just jinxed them, haven't we? Probably. Uh, Not in the playoffs right now. Wait, curse. you should have said out, Max. You're the one that does the reverse jinx. Yeah. Commentary's curse. There we go. Oh, maybe. No. Either way, yeah. we're going to watch from the no. comforts of our home. Right. Okay. Why would you even invite me back on this show if I said that? They can't. They can't we ask ourselves that every time you. Leave. And they're winning MLS Cup. So. Speaking of broccoli, no. hey, if you want to win MLS Cup, you got to make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the broccoli, uh, master of the. They're the, the most obvious. hungriest team right now, looking for a spot. So, but all right, we can't you, eat a castle. But would you eat broccoli? Uh, there you have you it, need guys. A white castle? That is the definitive, way too early MLS playoff previews. That's the first time this has ever been done, by the way. Before the show, all of us took it a step further by seeding our playoff picks, and here they are. Wow, look at that. So how do you think we did? Let us know. We'll post our playoff orders on 110 Football social media channels. Reply with your rankings. Let's see how you stack up against us when all this is said and done. We'll revisit in November. Yes. I'm uh, not sure if you guys know this, but I fancy myself to be a bit of a singer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do know this. Yeah. That that beautiful. Cadillac? We know plenty. Carlos Cadillac <laughs> is a different person who is a very good singer. But Never that's... seen Max Bredos and Carlos Cadillac in the same room at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> who amongst the LAFC squad <laughs> thinks they got the pipes? Let's find out on this week's LAFC Class of 21. Who's most likely to be on a singing competition show? I'm probably gonna go with Tristan. Tristan always is always playing music and he's always kinda like singing to it, so I'm gonna go with Tristan. Yeah, I'm gonna say me for sure. I got a great voice. Jordan. Jordan. He has talent. Maybe Poncho, maybe uh, El Profe. They love their Spanish music and um, it's too loud for me to hear any of them singing it. Probably Bryce. Bryce. Bryce was, yeah. J Justin Bieber. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. yeah. You remember. She likes it. Yeah. Well, Champions League last year in Mexico, I had I sang oh, right. Baby by Justin Bieber, and I still get it to this day. Like, they still make fun of me. Thank you, Jerry and Max, for stopping by, though I'm still confused as to why Max was just hanging out in their patio earlier. Don't ask questions to things you don't want answers to. Yeah, good point. Well, Vince asked me to take this segment because he can't come to terms with the fact that he was absolutely crushed in Players to Watch last week. Absolutely crushed. Core underscore Raw on Instagram is taking home this signed Walker Zimmerman poster. That was great. Walker Zimmerman, love it. Just frame it up on the wall somewhere, right? Anyway, thoughts on your poor performance this week? Nice. Uh, so let's turn our attention to this week. Remember, pick one player from each team and reply in our social media channels before kickoff, and you could be a winner, but you have to beat us. And this week, I'm really going for it. So here are my picks. For San Jose, I have trophies. Come on now. Five goals, two games? Yeah. That's crazy. There's an in and out nearby, though. <laughs> we, like, put a full screen graphic yeah. of that. Yeah, aren't you hungry, buddy? Yeah. No, but five goals, two games, I would be stupid if I didn't put them as uh, my players to watch. Come on, that's like guaranteed goals at this point. So no fullbacks this week? No fullbacks this week. Yeah. So I'm going I'm going just raw stats this okay. week. Trophies, you're going with the hot hand. What and then for the LAFC, I have Chicho Rongo. The other hot hand. The other hot hand. That's six goals in six games? I mean, he... Five. What, so five and six? Goals like, in five straight games. I, I, I just like goals. And goals get I me just points. like goals. And goals get me points in fantasy. So I'm going to win because they're going to score goals for me. All right. Well, this is why you're going to lose. Oh. Both those guys are no longer going to be hot. Streaks are over. And I'm going to win with Christian Espinoza from uh, San Jose. He's a winger. He scores some goals. He also sets up some goals. So he's their most consistent player. Consistency, not hot. See, this is, this is how a pro does this game. Uh, and the other guy's Jose C. Fuentes, a guy that missed the biggest chance in his game. Yeah. And this is how a pro does it. He's going to bounce back. Uh, if you watch that entire game, Jose C. Fuentes was an, in another world. Like, he had 360 vision. He knew exactly what he was doing. Almost had a worldie. Uh, that, yeah, he should have. Yeah. 
she, she would have scored that, that chip from 30 yards. Uh, but Jose Sufentes is going to bounce back. He's been LAFC's MVP, aside from Chicha. So I think uh, that's what's going to help. You know, well, as much as I want to say I'm going to crush you, I'm going to crush you. Wow. Anyway, best of luck, everyone, this week. All right, guys, now it's my turn to take over a segment for Connor because Eli is talking about how bad Toronto FC is this season, and you know what that means. What? What, what does it mean? Oh, yeah, look, I guess they have been pretty bad this season, so, so I guess I agree with Eli. Oh. Well, that didn't go as planned. But let's see what Eli has to say about Connor's second favorite team. Four years ago, Toronto FC pranced their way to the Supporter Shield and MLS Cup title. They slam dunked their way through the Canadian Championship and were one penalty shootout away from beating Chivas Guadalajara to win the 2018 CONCACAF Champions League. They could have become the first MLS team to do so since the 2000 Galaxy. Fast forward to 2021, things looked all right for Toronto, a team that kept a lot of the guys that won it all with them in 2017. And this is where things get good. And by good, I mean bad. But then, do we have dramatic music? We don't? Okay. But then, longtime head coach Greg Vanny left Toronto for the LA Galaxy and was replaced by Chris Armas. Yes, the same Armas that failed the New York Red Bulls. The players Armas inherited did not match his style of play and the team plummeted. After a 7-1 loss to DC, he was sacked and replaced by Javier Perez for the remainder of the season. You could say the team played slightly better at the start under Perez, but since then, they've gone back to sucking, having lost seven of their last nine. They currently live at the bottom of the table with just 18 points, and here's how they've managed to do so. You may find this list offensive. You think that list was offensive? See if you can defend this. But don't just blame the game, blame the players. My fix is easy. Find a new head coach that you're willing to commit to long term. Keep Pozuelo, Soteldo, and a lot of the young guys and build a team around them that fits the new coach's style of play. Toronto FC has become one of the biggest, most well-known MLS clubs worldwide and has no business being at the bottom of the table. And with a little work, I know they'll be back at 100, or 128 Canadian. See? See, I told you, I don't always agree with Eli, but he's right. You know, Toronto needs help, man. What? That's our show. You can find me, Jen Munoz, and this TFC apologist hosting oh. away days 30 minutes before kickoff of the LFC match in San Jose this Saturday. And we'll all be back with you right after the game on the 110 Football YouTube channel for the instant reaction post game show. And let us not forget, 110 will be in the house at the Tech Ball US qualifiers on Saturday in No. If you haven't seen Tech Ball before, it's crazy, bro. Imagine if a ping pong table and a soccer juggler had a mutant baby, it would be Tech Ball. It's a sick game. Come on out, say hi to the 110 team, and if you're extra nice, I will read your fortune. And if you're extra, extra nice, for only $110.99 a month, I will be your e-pal and play games with you. Sick deal, right? Connor, you in? Sure. This? Yeah, sick deal, man. Right? Good deal, $110.99. Who's the, is the foosball table the dad, and the ping pong table the mom, or? I, I said mutant baby, so they could both be. What, what's its name? Javier. Javier. That makes sense. Anyway, see you guys next week. Hey, homie, are you a fan of 110 Football Show? Well, if you are, let us know. Hit that like and subscribe.